So we have the finishing of the story of Ruth in the Old Testament. Short, short book, four chapters long. We start with Ruth as someone in Moab who happens to be uh, stumbled upon by Naomi. The story starts with Naomi and her husband and two sons, and they move to Moab because they're starving in Judah, and they find uh, daughters there. Things happen, and the sons and, and the husband die, and the one daughter lost goes back to Moab, but Ruth stays with Naomi no matter what, back to her homeland, to Judah. Naomi, uh, Ruth swears that wherever Naomi goes, that Ruth will go, wherever her family is, that is her family. Whatever her God is, that is her God, and so on and so forth. And then we see Ruth in the fields gleaning. She stumbles upon Boaz, a relative of Naomi, and things start to happen. Naomi and Ruth hatch a plan so that Ruth can be part of this family of Boaz and still remain Ruth's or Naomi's family, kindred. And Boaz is taken with Ruth and makes his own plans. In this chapter, Boaz gets together five, ten of the elders of the community. How easy that is to get people together and say, this is what we're going to do. There we go. No court of justice, no court of law, that's it. Community is all there is. Handing a sandal back and forth is a contractual agreement. Can't quite picture that one, but interesting. Interesting signs. Boaz says to this next of kin, who is closer than Boaz, that, do you want this land of Elimelech? Of course I do. Oh, but wait, there's something more you haven't thought of. You also get Ruth. Well, that's a different story. I, I can't quite afford that. So, Boaz, it's all yours if you'd like it. The land, the woman Ruth, it's all yours. Just as Boaz had planned. Just as Ruth and Naomi hoped what happened with their plan. So now we have the story of Ruth. We have many endings in Ruth. Pick one. The people bless Boaz's wedding. The women bless Naomi. The neighbors name Obed as Naomi's. And the narrator gives us the genealogy of Perez down to David. There's all kinds. When you follow which ending you choose, it makes a different perception on the story itself. What I find interesting is the story is called Ruth, and it's mainly about Ruth. But at the very end, she plays a very minor role. She's not even named at the very end. She's the woman who bore Obed. The story becomes more about Boaz. It becomes more about Naomi and her redemption in back into the community, back into the status that she once enjoyed. Ruth is kind of back, pushed back to the, to the background, if it were. And then I wonder, what's it like to be in the limelight for so long and then to be kind of skirted away and in a way? Back in the 70s, one of my favorite movies was written by Sylvester Stallone. I bet you'll never guess what it is. Rocky. And how many Rocky movies have there been since? Five, six? In Rocky, there is Apollo Creed, who is the current world heavyweight boxing champion. Rocky must defeat him, or at least go the distance with Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed is smart. He's fast. He's strong. He's a great, great businessman. He loves being in the spotlight. He loves being on top. And after Rocky II, Rocky defeats him. And in Rocky III, Apollo Creed doesn't know what to do. He's lost. He's no longer on top. How does he handle something like this? And in the movie Rocky IV, they go up against the giant Russian. And the Russian defeats Apollo Creed. Actually, does worse than that. But Apollo Creed would rather die than be in the background. That's how important it was for Apollo Creed to be up front and in the limelight. And we know for professional athletes, it, it's a lot of the same thing too. They enjoy the spotlight. And as soon as they retire, somehow they get forgotten and they become not quite as significant in our society, as it were. Some athletes make it, are smart. They find careers that are really good for them, that they can really excel in. 
they find and redefine themselves very, very well. But we have this story of Naomi, or Ruth. What's it like to be that limelight and to be, to be shoved off to the side? It seems that, that Ruth has a purpose. God has a purpose for Ruth, doesn't he? Almost to redeem Naomi. Naomi has no one. She has no sons, no husband. She has nothing, basically, in that culture. And, of course, we think of our culture, and, and that's really not as big of a deal as it was back then. But Ruth almost serves as almost an alternative theology to Naomi. Naomi was depressed. She thought God had left her, and God wasn't present at all. And yet, Ruth has been steadfast this whole time, by her side, every step of the way. Perhaps she shows that God is like that. Perhaps God is like Ruth, in a way. Maybe Ruth is like God, in a way, I should say. Ruth is almost like God with skin on. To show Naomi, to show us that even despite whatever happens to us, no matter what our trials and tribulations, joys, that God is steadfast with us along the way. And that God does redeem us, as Ruth eventually redeemed Naomi through the birth of her son Obed. Redemption. And very, very important. Even the relative was not given a name except Redeemer. One to redeem back into society again, to have the name back again, to give in status once again. Is it our lot in life to be in the limelight? And if so, how long do we stay there and then what do we do with it? Is that God's purpose for us, to, to play an important role in something and then step back as things unfold, as life unfolds? A friend of mine owned his own company. He's an entrepreneur. He, he, he built the company up from nothing, and then after a while he decided it wasn't for him anymore, that the company needed something else. So his son, who was brought up in the company, knew the ways, knew the work ethic, knew the company, took over. A different, different kind of leader to provide the company what they needed at the time. My friend was very wise because he was in the limelight for a while. He was this great starter of businesses, and yet gave his son that limelight and retreated to the background. He had served his purpose in some ways. In some ways we're in the limelight, other ways we're not. Sometimes we're just a steady presence in the lives of others. And that's good. We can be as Ruth, to be the, the skin on God, to show people what God is like in some respects. We think about the life of Jesus. We learn from the, from the New Testament that we know about his birth. And then we find out some things when he's around 10, 12 years old in the, in the synagogue, arguing and debating with the, the theologians there, with the rabbis. And then we get him at 30-some years old, being baptized by John in the Jordan River. Not a lot of, is known about Jesus. And then the Gospels tell a lot of the story of Jesus. And some of the letters of Paul continue the journey of Jesus. But Jesus' life, his, his ministry per se, with the disciples was only three years long. And in that time, he was God incarnate, showing how to love, how to include those who are outcast, to heal people who shouldn't be healed, according to society, to love people who shouldn't be loved, to, to be a part of people's lives in sometimes a quiet way, sometimes preaching to the masses, sometimes talking quietly with his disciples. And then Jesus was crucified, died, and was risen. Jesus' purpose was short-lived in terms of human, human life, but the purpose of Jesus lives on in our hearts. Jesus is still with us, walking with us as Ruth walked with Naomi. God still walks with us as the Holy Spirit in our, in our souls, in our, in our very beings. God doesn't always act as we think God should. 
We're not always going to be the main person. We're not always going to be the, in the limelight. And, and those who are who are parents know that once the, the baby is born, then the husband, actually, he's gone from the picture. And the wife takes a back seat, and the baby is the main focus of the family after that. And we all have our part to play. We all have that nurturing sense that God has given us to be part of this life that God gives us. It's not always a straight line. Ruth is not an Israelite. The line of Jesus, the line of David is not a straight line. It's got curves and, and diversions and things. Ruth is a Moabite, and yet through this Moabite who's come into the fold is, a, is an ancestor of David, and David is an ancestor of Jesus, and so on and so forth. There are characters in there that God uses that shouldn't be used, but God uses, and the purposes get filled. Sometimes we wonder if we have a purpose. We search for that purpose. And yet if we look hard enough, we know that by our very being, our very presence, we do have a purpose. We are living spirits of God. We're vessels, messengers, disciples, apostles, what, what have you of the goodness of God in our lives. And we have a community to be part of. We noticed in Ruth that the community, not Naomi, not Ruth, named the child, but the community names the child Obed. All this is done with the community's blessing. The blessing of Boaz's marriage to Ruth, the blessing of the baby, blessing of Naomi back into society, all done in part of community where God lives and is powerful and is steadfast, all part of community. So what ending do we choose and how do we perceive the story of Ruth and how do we see our God, the one who's supposed to be so cruel and mean and, and, and unjust in the Old Testament as opposed to the New Testament where Jesus is kind and loving. and We see beautiful stories like Ruth in the Old Testament that show us that God is merciful, loving, steadfast. There are stories in the Old Testament, as Ruth can attest to, that show God in God's glory and in God's light of being something we didn't expect in the Old Testament. So the people bless Boaz's wedding. The women bless Naomi. The neighbors, the neighbors name Obed as Naomi's. The narrator gives us a male genealogy of Perez. And there are others. God gives us the insight to see how we are part of God's community, how we are part of God's plan, how we fit God's purpose in our lives, in the lives of others. And blessed be God who does all things for that. Amen.